engineer at NCAR, and I'm joined by uh, Matt Ramey and Nihant Cherokuru. If you guys want to give a wave to these out up to the audience. Um, our job, we work with our NCAR scientists. We help them uh, create animations and visualizations of their science data, and so that's a really fun part of our job. Uh, we also um, research and develop really cool new technologies for education and outreach. And so that's actually what we're going to be showing you today. So let me uh, share my screen here and get us started. All right, so should have the screen popping up there. Um, so yeah, so one of the, the, the cool technologies that uh, we want to talk to you today about is called augmented reality. And, and so before we start, let's just talk about a little bit about what is augmented reality. And so uh, a really simple definition is that augmented reality is taking computer generated content um, like images or objects or just even labels and overlay the, overlaying them on top of a real world video uh, to provide additional information or even for entertainment. And so probably one of the most recognizable examples of augmented reality is a game called Pokemon Go. Um, a lot of you have probably heard about this. It became popular in 2016. And it's, you use your mobile device to battle virtual creature, creatures. So it's a really fun, fun game to play. Um, but there's a lot of ways to use augmented reality. Another example, uh, you could be uh, walking down a city street and uh, maybe you point your, your mobile device's camera uh, along the street or at a building and you can see um, what businesses are in that area, what, where the coffee shops are, or maybe a shopping center or something like that. So that's the picture up on the right. Uh, on the lower left, uh, another example is for home design. And so maybe you bought a new uh, coffee table and you wanna see what it looks like uh, in, your, in your living room. And so you can actually, actually before you buy it, you can actually go in there and put the coffee table in your living room and see what it looks like. So it's a really handy tool to have. Um, what we use it for here at NCAR though, is really to try to uh, create engaging and interesting um, educational uh, uh, applications, uh, trying to get more people interested in science and understanding uh, the work that we do here. And so in the picture on the lower right, that's a picture that Nihant created. Uh, he has a hurricane there right in the middle uh, of a table in our library at NCAR. And so it's a really fun way to look at science and kind of interact with it. And so what are we going to do today? So we're really excited to show you a couple examples of augmented reality that we've been developing at NCAR along with uh, other group members uh, here in our organization. And so Matt's going to start off by uh, demonstrating some examples of a giant hailstone, a supercomputer that you can put in your living room, uh, and even an asteroid impact. So that's going to be really fun and exciting to look at. And then Nihant is going to follow up, and he's going to show you an application that he created called Medio AR. And it runs on your mobile device, and he'll show you how to explore a bunch of really cool data sets with that. Uh, and just a, a note, if you do want to try this later on, uh, make sure that you're connected to a Wi-Fi signal so you don't uh, incur any kind of carrier charges on your uh, cell phone. All right, next slide up. And so uh, Matt's going to start off with this. Uh, this is just a little bit of an example or instruction page. Um, we will be posting this, uh, the slides for this presentation so you, so you can come back and look at this and see how to work uh, these, uh, these uh, examples. Uh, but if you want to follow along, you can come to this little, um, uh, this address up here, this web page uh, uh, up on the, uh, on the left side of the screen. Or if you have a mobile device handy, you can point your camera to this QR code and it'll take you to the same page. Uh, on this page, once you get there, there's several different examples you can click on. Uh, if you click on the, the hailstone example, uh, this page on the right will come up. And if you're just using a web browser, you can use your mouse to kind of rotate the object around. Uh, look at uh, more information and additional links lower in the page. Uh, if you're using a mobile device, though, uh, you'll see this little AR icon pop up in the lower right-hand corner. And if you press on that, it'll actually bring up the virtual object, which you can then place in your living room or on a tabletop, and you can interact and walk around the object uh, uh, as, you, as you like. And so without further ado, I think we'll go ahead and let Matt get started to um, uh, present his piece of the presentation. Great, thanks, Tim. Yeah, as Tim said, I'm Matt Ramey. I'm a software engineer at NCAR, and I do data visualization. So I'm going to be demoing some of these, and this is the first one Tim mentioned, the, the hailstone. So if you click on that cube icon on that page, uh, and you're on a newer Android or iPhone device, 
you're going to see something like this. And this is looking at a dining room table. And as you can see from the, the plaque there, this is a hailstone that actually fell in Vivian, South Dakota in 2010 and eight inches in diameter and almost two pounds. So this is one of the advantages of using AR because you can see I placed it here next to a coffee pot and you can really sense the scale. Uh, so this is actually a computer model of that hailstone. But if you don't have the real object, you can see how big that is. And you can imagine that'd be pretty bad to have that falling out of the sky. So this is one of the great things about AR. And uh, I'll go ahead and go to the next video, Tim, please, and show another advantage of AR. So <clears throat> as you know, the Mesa Lab's closed right now. Uh, so normally we'd have Super Science Saturday at the Mesa Lab and our section would probably be in the Viz Lab, which is, the, is my Zoom background here. And we show visualizations and demos in that room. But since you can't go there, uh, you can use AR to see some of the things we have at the lab. And this is an example. This is the Cray 1A supercomputer and it's serial number three. So one of the very first ones, uh, it came out just after the first Star Wars movie in 1977. <clears throat> and it cost almost $9 million, uh, it weighed five and a half tons. It took 30 construction workers, engineers and helpers to move it into the, to the lab. And now your smartphone is actually, actually has more computing power than that supercomputer. So it's pretty neat. Uh, once the Mesa Labs lab opens, you can actually go back and, and look at this. But for now, you can use AR and you can put this in your living room. You can walk around it. You can see just how big it is, see the scale. And I'll go ahead and move on to just one more example here. <clears throat> Another great thing you can do with this is look at data sets. So what we do is we take data from scientists that simulate things like this, for example, is an asteroid strike. Uh, they simulate things on a supercomputer that can't actually have, or you couldn't actually study in, in real life uh, because this asteroid strike is hitting the ocean and that splash is going up. You, if you imagine the coffee pot is as tall as Mount Everest, that splash is going up twice as high as Mount Everest. So it's just a huge, huge impact. Uh, so we use computer models to study that. And then the scientists can take that, they can walk around it, and they can look at the details, they can see how, what the scale is. And uh, it's just a great way to see your data in the real world. So there's a lot of potential use for uh, augmented reality. So anyway, that's just a quick rundown of a few examples from that page, but there's multiple other examples and we're going to be adding to it continuously as we get more and more augmented reality content. So I encourage you to check out that page and I think that's all I got. So I'll turn it back over to uh, Tim and Nihant. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Matt. That was that was uh, that was great. Um, and again, I'll just reiterate what Matt, Matt just said, you know, just try out those, um, if you want to go to that website and try those things out on your own, uh, you, again, you can use um, your mobile device, or if you just have a, a desktop or a, a laptop with a web browser, you can also interact with them um, as well. So we really encourage folks to, to give that a try. Um, so yeah, so next up is uh, Nihant Sharakuru, and Nihant is going to demo an application that he developed called Medio AR. Uh, it's an augmented reality application that places virtual objects on top of um, what we call science pages or science sheets. Uh, the app runs on iOS or Android devices, and you can uh, download those uh, from the Apple or Google Play Store so that uh, you can see that up here. It uh, works on um, both, your, um, both types of devices. Um, and <clears throat> after you do that, then you would need to download and print out these science sheets. That's what you see over here on the left. Uh, that are being flipped over. Uh, you can print those out in either color or black and white. And once you do that, you'll see these little, what we call image markers on each page. And it's just a kind of a black box with an image in the center and these little white boxes around it. And so once you start the application, you then point your camera on your mobile device at that 
image marker, and then the virtual object will appear on top of the science page. And you can rotate it around and look at it from different angles and that sort of, that sort of thing. And so, and so um, Neonth is going to show us a little example of how that, uh, how that actually works. Hi, everyone. So, uh, so basically, the video that you're watching is a screen capture of my device running the Meteor AR application. And as you can see, I've got some science pages printed out. And when you look at the science pages through the application, you have a 3D image that shows up corresponding to the data set. And this just shows the different kinds of data sets that we have in the application. So what you're seeing right now is uh, an image of the sun or a video of the sun as photographed through uh, in two different wavelengths. And what we'll do right now is we'll go through one of these data sets and which happens to be one of my favorite. So just moving on. So this data set is one of my favorites, as I've said earlier, because you get to see like why we have seasons and like what are some changes that Earth uh, sees like when we have seasons. So what you're seeing uh, is basically this quantity that was that's being represented. So we have uh, 24 hours that represents an average day in each month. So if you look at the gray color. Uh, bar at the bottom. So that shows you the month. And what we are seeing is like an average day in each month. So right off the bat, if you can see, like you, you see this section of the earth that keeps rotating. So the darker areas are the areas on the earth that are experiencing night and the brighter areas are places where it's day. Right off the bat, you can see that the duration of day and night is not constant throughout the year. It changes based on where you live as well as which season it is in. And these things are mirror images in the Northern and Southern hemisphere. So let us say uh, I am a scientist living, I mean, I go to the South Pole and I decide to stay there doing some research experiment. You can see that in December when it is winter in the Northern hemisphere, it's summer in the Southern hemisphere. So I'll have days when the sun wouldn't rise. Similarly, what you're seeing right now in Antarctica near the South Pole, you have days when the sun doesn't rise at all. So it's dark and now it's, you have days when you have, like the sun is always there. And this sort of, tell, like using this data set, you can sort of explore this and move the object around and see it from different directions. Now, if you're interested, this is not the only data set that we have. So we have some other data sets uh, given in other science sheets. So if you're interested, I would encourage you to like check it out. And I'm curious to know what you folks find. So with that, I'll pass it back to Tim. All right, thank you, Neon. That's really, that's great. And um, I think one thing I forgot to mention too is that the, the apps are free. So, um, you know, feel free to download those and um, they don't, won't cost you anything to do that as well. So, but do remember to keep your Wi-Fi on when you're, when you're using it, it'll uh, help you save uh, from incurring any kind of carrier charges. So, um, so with that, uh, that's kind of our quick presentation of the kind of the different ways that we're uh, using augmented reality and kind of exploring new technologies and really trying to get um, a wider audience engaged, engaged in what we do. Uh, and up here on the screen now is just, a, just some of the different links that we talked about earlier in the presentation. Uh, but again, you can you should be able to download the whole presentation later on and, and have all that information that we talked about. So again, thank you. We're really glad to be part of Super Science Saturday and uh, we're happy to take any questions if there are any out there. Thank you so much, Tim, Matt, and Nihant. And in the honor of um, having a Pikachu <laughs> mentioned during your show, I have my Pikachu on for scale of now it's in the real world. Um, we do have some questions and I'm wondering, Brett, if you can please post up the first question that we have from our audience. And I think it's um, Evan who, who was asking a question because um, you, you mentioned kind of like video games and Minecraft is one of the video games that, you know, is pretty popular out there in the world. And, you know, there's a lot of things that kids do to create worlds and, you know, virtual reality is everywhere. Virtual reality in our life through our phones. 
<laughs> that's so amazing um but i do have a question and um once it pops up you'll be able to see it if you need to refer back to it but there was a question from evan asking is this like minecraft earth because it plops your building in the world Are you guys familiar with Minecraft? Earth? That's a good. I am not. <laughs> I, am not I know of Minecraft. I don't know Minecraft Earth. That's a new one. Yeah, like I've actually seen pictures of it, and it's pretty cool. In fact, Evan, it is a lot like Minecraft. In fact, we use some of the same technology that is used in Minecraft. So, like, if you think about it, data visualizations in three dimensions are a lot like Minecraft too. So, in Minecraft, you create these blocks right and you color it or like you have different options that you can choose so in data visualizations it's the same thing so remember the hurricane like if you look at matt's picture like he has it on the screen behind him if you were to zoom really close into that hurricane you would actually see blocks similar to minecraft so think of it like a minecraft game except that instead of like doing everything artistically we actually use data and computers to paint those different blocks that we put on, on Earth. Great, thank you so much for tackling that question, which leads us to the second question that we have from Jenna, which is how hard is it to make things in augmented reality or AR and virtual reality, VR? Niant, do you want to take that one or? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So it used to be really hard in the past. Like if you go back six, seven years, you really had a lot of coding that you had to do. But however, we are getting to a point wherein like AR VR is getting more uh, interactive and it's more user friendly. So if you know how to model 3D objects or if you have a, an existing computer model for 3D objects, object, there is a fairly easy way for you to see it in AR. So I would say it is not as hard as it used to be, but if you, no, if you have some modeling skills, like 3D modeling skills, you might be able to easily put that model in AR and VR and, like, and view it. Hey, Neanth, I'm drawing a blank on the name, but what, what's the name of the, um, the Mac application um, that you can actually, um, Use I think it's AR kit to put. Yes, yeah, it's it's called Reality Composer and it's yes. uh, released by Apple. So in fact, yeah, that's a good point. And so if you have like Reality Composer, allows you to like take any 3D models and put it in, and you can preview it like right. It's very fairly easily you can put it in your living room and see. Yeah, that's it's, it's, so oh, so go cool. ahead. Yeah. It just just the, the the reality composer. It's really fun too because they they have like pre-made objects like rockets and things you can put in and kind of play with, and you can launch a rocket in your like like Neon said in your living room or off a coffee table or something like that. It's a it's a fun little application. And these are virtual rockets. Yes, they are virtual. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. And if I feel like, you know, if there are artists out there or people that love to draw, this is definitely a way to get into science in a different way. It doesn't have to be doing all that number crunching, but you can do the art part of it too. Yeah. Is that correct? I, I was just gonna, just gonna mention that actually. So when you're creating these 3D objects, uh, we're combining math, we're using the scientists data and we're using math to analyze that. And I'm also an artist and we use a lot of art uh, influence. We, we use a lot of color theory and we color that data and, and make it accessible to people and make it look good. And try, we're just trying to get that data out there. So yeah, definitely, yeah, anything you, you may not need to have all of the computer skills. There might be some tools there that you can use. And if you have an art background or vice versa, you, if you are more into computer science, you can learn about the art and you can start to combine the two. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a very artistic uh, field. This is so great. And I know we're coming close to the 1030 hour, but we do have um, two more questions. One of them was, you know, what was the name of the application? Is it Medio, like meteorology, AR, 
or how do you get to that? Correct. Yes, it's uh, uh, Meteo AR, Ebi, excuse me, M E T E O, and then A R. Um, and so if you go to Google Play or the um, Apple Store, you can just type in that name and search for that name and it'll pop up. Sounds great. Thank you. And then there was a question because you, you showed like what it looks like the earth is rotating. And um, we had Lydia, who's age four. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, the, she was asking why were the globes spinning in different directions? And I think it's, um, it's kind of referring to this like AR that kind of pops up when you're looking at your phone, but can you, can you answer what was that? What was, why were the earth spinning? Yes, uh, that's a great observation, Lydia. So in fact, like, I don't think many people would have seen it. So like good, great job on it. I'm quite impressed. So, so in the videos that you see, I'm assuming you're talking about the Northern and Southern hemispheres that I showed. So it, it's not that the globes are spinning in different direction, but it's just that we are viewing it differently. So the, the videos that I've taken on my phone, if you imagine the globe spinning, the first video was taken from the North Pole and the second video is sort of, would be a mirror image in a way because we are like, the globe is still spinning in the same direction. However, your viewpoint changes. And like, that's what makes it appear like the globes are spinning in different directions, but uh, in general, they're not. So in, if you were to use the application and if you were to spin the earth yourself, you can actually get a better sense of what's happening. Thank you so much. And as we say, thank you to our presenters, Matt, Tim, and Nihant. I'm wondering, Nihant, if you can please um, show the QR code once again to get the examples, and then we'll put that up following this event at 1030, we'll have our next group of um, uh, speakers. But thank you so much for joining us, um, uh, Nihan, Tim, and Matt, and everybody who's out there. We'll just show this real quick. And then um, once everybody has an opportunity to see this, and these can also be accessed through the NCAR UCAR website. Is that correct? Um, actually, well, so. Uh, Lorena, we had, we had shared a link. Is that possible to put the link up for folks to download the, the, the slideshow? That, that would give all the information. That'd probably, yeah, probably be the best way. I think uh, we yeah. are recording this, so people can definitely rewatch as well. And okay. Tiffany posted it in the, uh, the Slido as well. OK, oh, and for everybody on Slido, if you look at the three bars on the top left of the Slido interface, you can click on that, and it'll give you options to interact and engage with different um, a survey. You can give us feedback and check out these different links that we have up on there. Thank you so much, everybody. And Brett and Paul, we're going to go back to you if you can put up the schedule for the rest of the day. And we'll see you back here at 1030. Thank you.